Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I'm calling it breaking point because that may very well be exactly where we are. And if that is the case, selling should start to accelerate and we're going to find out this coming week. All right, so we're going to take a look at uh, just the weekly charts of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. We'll drill in, take a little more detailed look at the Dow Industrials. Then I'm going to look at a couple indicators and then focus in and talk about TLT and TNX, the 10-year yield, so you can see what was going on this last week. And then look at the Shanghai Composite and the German DAX. All right, so here's the S&P 500 down 95.56 for the week. Uh, the lowest weekly close in the uh, month of February. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got some continuation in here. Uh, let's see what happened on Friday, down 18.19 on Friday. So let's take a look at the queues. I talked about the queues in detail um, last week. I was looking for this to come down, looking for some continuation. Why? Because we had a very bearish engulfing type pattern here uh, for the previous week. And so this is what you call a bearish engulfing candle because it engulfed the entire body of the previous week. And then we sure enough got the follow through this last week, a lot of heavy selling in a lot of the high tech stocks and in the, uh, the NASDAQ 100. All right, so that is the picture there. Let's take a look at the Dow. The Dow, look at this uh, weekly chart down 562 points. This trend line connects the highs of September 2018, February 2020, and then we bumped up against it for a couple of weeks uh, here in February, and then we had a, what we call a throw over here this last week, and then look how we came down and closed almost on the low for the week. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the daily chart. You can see what's going on over here uh, the last two days. I'm sure everybody got excited on Wednesday and thought, oh, here we go. What, I, what we got excited about watching it from the standpoint of uh, Elliott Wave pattern uh, is the fact that we got this Lex extra leg up in here is exactly what we were looking for because of the pattern. I'll talk about that in a minute. But the last two days, pretty big downdraft in here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Elliott Wave picture. Here's what I'm looking at. I think that this counts best. I've talked about this before, that I think the, the high back over here in February of 2020 was the bull market high. And that what we're doing is a large flat, a big A, B, C. And when you have a flat, the B wave can go above the beginning of wave A. And that's exactly what we've done. And we're well within the parameters for a B wave. So when you have a flat, the A wave is a three wave, the B wave is a three wave, then you expect a C wave, a five wave, C wave. So right now we've been looking at this last leg up here and saying, okay, what is going on? You know, and um, I keep pressing the wrong button and here's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so here's what we're looking at, this C wave. It needs to be either an impulse or an ending diagonal pattern. I believe it counts as a, uh, a, y, a broadening ending diagonal pattern. Uh, it's not the prettiest, but it does meet the parameters that we have in here. And what we're looking for is a zigzag in this fifth wave. And we finally, you know, we had the zig. We finally got the zag in here that popped on Tuesday and Wednesday. And, you know, we had this chop that was going on for several days. And I kept thinking, what the heck is going on in here? And, uh, and sure enough, when you drill down and take a look at the 30-minute view, and actually it shows up even on the hourly, we had a sideways triangle pattern for a B wave. That's exactly what was going on. So we got our A, B, and then we got our C wave. Had a little bit of a truncated fifth wave, small fifth wave in here to complete the C wave. But now, here's what's really interesting. We are in what looks like an impulsive wave down. One, two, and then I think we're in the third wave. Now, within that third wave, I think what we're also counting is one, two, within the third wave. And if this is correct, what we are in is a third of a third. And this is when selling really starts to kick in in here. And you could see how how we close that last 30 minutes of the day on Friday, 
closing right on the low, and they just hammered it in the last 30 minutes. And they did it on all the indices. And what's interesting, too, is that when you look at all the major indices, it doesn't matter whether it's the S&P or the, uh, the NASDAQ 100, or the Dow, or the Russell 2000, they all appear to be in a third of a third, which is why I'm looking at this and thinking, yeah, we could be at that breaking point and the selling really start to accelerate. We will see this coming week. Now, what's going on here over here on the daily chart? Look how this trend line coming off that uh, that low from October, what was that, October 30th, and uh, connecting the low of uh, January 29th. And we, we broke it and actually closed slightly below it on Friday. Okay, so that's a little bit of a negative. Now, what am I looking for? If this is truly an ending diagonal pattern like I think it is, this should fairly rapidly move on down out of it and collapse out of it in terms of the selling. So the first thing we need to see is to see it break out of this, take out this low, and then see the selling come down. we got a gap over here that probably will close fairly quickly. And then I've created a support area in here as kind of my target that I talked about with our members that said, OK, if I had to guess where would I think major support might come in, this is what I'm looking at based on previous resistance and support areas here over during the last year. So that's what we're looking at right now. Do I think that's the end of it? No, not at all. Uh, again, we're going to take one wave at a, at a time. And right now we're looking for a five wave sequence uh, to, uh, to start the move down. All right, let's take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Now, the McClellan Oscillator, I'm going to start off with the Oscillator first. So here's where we're at. This is a lot of, it looks like a lot of noise. And uh, when you get into uh, below minus 150 on the oscillator, you are in deeply oversold territory. We are at minus 180. On Thursday, we we're at minus 162. We continue to go down just a little bit more on Friday. Now, yeah, we can bounce around down in here and then rally out of it. As you can see we did that just a, a couple of weeks, few weeks ago. In uh, late January, got a pretty rapid bounce, and then here we are back down again. But sometimes you, you get that bounce, like right here in January of 2020, bounced up, and then you come back down, and you continue to get even lower and see how they chopped around in the whole move in March. So we'll see what we get. What's gotten my attention here is the summation index. The summation index is a cumulative of the McClellan oscillator. And what's interesting is, Back in the spring of 2020, of 2020, we had divergence that showed up between January and February. We got it again in before the September and October sell-off last fall. We're getting it again now, okay? Divergence between mid-December and mid-February. The stock market went like this. The McClellan Oscillator went like this. It did not confirm it, and now it looks like it may be rolling over. The strong breakdown that I'd be looking at is when we come down here and break below the zero line, which is exactly what happened here in March and what happened in the fall of 2018. So we'll see if we start to get some continuation and this truly does roll over. Okay, that is the McClellan Oscillator. Let's take a look at the High Yield Bond Fund. HYG, let me go right here. This is what's going on the last couple of days. Now, this also had what looked like a, uh, a ending, a broadening ending diagonal type of pattern in here. I didn't, I, I don't count the waves here on HYGA. Uh, I just don't focus on that. I focus on the price action. Uh, but the trend lines did catch my attention. And then now all of a sudden we break down out of that. This market is basically screaming risk off right now. Okay. When HYG goes down, it means risk off. When it's in sync with the market and it's moving up, it's saying risk on. Animal spirits are uh, at, in full play. Okay, So that is HYG. TLT, long-term treasury bonds. Look at the move that happened on Friday. Holy cow. we got a big bounce up, but we've really, really pushing that to the downside. We're up $4.58 in here. Now, let me get make sure I get the right count. Here's what we've been looking at. We've been talking about a fifth wave finishing for quite a while. Uh, I just don't see. I'm looking for five waves. I'm just not sure that we got this third wave complete yet. 
We'll see what happens in here with this fourth wave. Uh, but this is my best take on it. I'm just not sure that we've got five waves complete yet. When we look at that 10-year yield, which closed at 1.46%, here's what I want to show you. And uh, we're going to take a look at these resistance zones. I'm going to put this on a weekly chart just to make it a little bit clearer. Okay, so right now we had been I'd been talking with the members about these uh, these key support levels that have been in here all the way back over into what is this in 2012. So for the last almost 10 years, key support levels. Looking to see is it would it play significant resistance when we got up and got into this, and it started to. But then this last week, we just blew right through it. And where are we? We're right at resistance at the level of February of last year, right before the market went down. So we literally, from an interest rate standpoint, have recovered the entire move. And so what I'm just showing you on the long-term picture is just to give some perspective. Back in January of 2000, uh, near the market peak, there was 6.82% on the 10-year yield. In 2007, 532 in uh, September of 2018, three and a quarter percent. And then here we are now at 1.46%. Okay, the low close, the low weekly close was 0.54% uh, on the week of July 26. We literally have got it almost in a full point in here. Now, it's going to be real interesting to see, do we bounce around and stay above this little resistance zone, which may become a support zone. Can we push through and get above this level right in here, which is, uh, I've got 1590, which is 1.59%, let's call it 1.6%. And you come back up over into this area and I've ballparked some resistance up in here, which is the level in the, uh, the late uh, 2019 into early 2020, uh, but it was really late 2019, uh, a little bit higher, up around 1.85%. Uh, so watching these very, very uh, closely uh, and looking to see what happens here over the next couple of weeks. And the market, of course, is really, really focused on this. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Shanghai Composite and the DAX and we'll be done for the day. OK, here's my latest take on the Shanghai Composite. I haven't really talked about this in quite a long time. And right now I am leaning into the bull camp on the Shanghai Composite. And here's what I think is going on. I think from that peak in 2008, we had a big A. Actually, no, I'm going to get a little bit carried away there. Right here, A, B, C. And that this was the end of the corrective, path, corrective move. And that the initial blow off into 2015 was the first wave. Then we corrected into wave two. And now it looks like we're off and running in a primary wave three. Now, here's the key with that, right? When I look at the primary wave three, I'm counting uh, these intermediate wave moves in here. And I think there's a decent chance that the third intermediate wave may have finished in here. Look how it was down to 187 points this last week. The key is for the bullish scenario to hold, in my mind, we need to stay above this wave one right here the high 3288.45. We need to stay above that. So as long as in this corrective action that we get, that we stay above that level, then the bull camp, the bull scenario holds and um, continue to look for this to uh, work its way higher over time. All right, let's take a look at the DAX. Okay, the DAX this last week was down almost 207 points. I put this scenario in the same camp as the Dow Industrials and the S&P 500 that were doing a large flat pattern. And I'm looking for this B wave to be ending. And I think it may have ended with the high the week of February 7th. So we'll watch and see. Uh, a, B, C move, three wave move for wave B. When we turn it over and look at the daily chart, Here's what I'm looking at. Again, I think we had an ending diagonal type of pattern in here for the, uh, the finishing C wave. And I'm watching this trend line very closely because I think we break this trend line. I think the selling is going to accelerate and rapidly move to the downside. 
Okay, that is the picture. I'll go back to the weekly view. That is the picture for this week. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this kind of information, head over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend and a great week next week. Talk to you on the next video.